Hi guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. Thanks for joining me today. So lately, I've really been into exploring different scents and really dipping my toes in the water when it comes to more niche fragrances. So I wanted to share with you guys some new additions to my collection. I have some real gems to talk to you guys about and some of these are brand brand new so I don't have exactly a review to give you but I can give you a description and how I'm feeling about them so far. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first couple of fragrances I'm gonna share with you, I have tried them before. I actually have samples from Scentbird and I ended up purchasing the full bottle. They were definitely full bottle worthy. Star of the show. Always. My first purchase was Anishio's Musk Therapy. Such a gorgeous bottle. I actually ended up completely finishing the sample that I received from Scentbird and I knew that I had to have this back in my collection. This is such an addictive scent for me. This fragrance is classified as a musky floral unisex scent. The opening notes are more floral than the dry down. The magnolia really comes through that like initial spray, but it definitely dries down to a more soft and subtle floral and more musky than anything. There's also a ton of sandalwood coming through, especially on that dry down. I think this one is a lot closer to the skin. The projection isn't too strong, specifically on my skin, but it does last at least for five hours on me. This is one that I love for like an everyday, year-round, every type of weather and it's definitely signature scent worthy if you like something that is closer to the skin and a little bit more understated but still sophisticated. Another perfume that I purchased a full bottle of after trying it out on Scentbird is such a classic and is not a surprise to anyone. We have Delina Exclusive by PDM Parfum de Marly. This bottle is so girly, so, so beautiful. It has a little like rhinestone on the cap, which is just so cute. And just like the bottle, the fragrance itself is so feminine and so, so girly. It's very playful, but not young. It's playful, flirty, and fun, but still a little bit sexy. And Delina Exclusive is classified as an amber floral fragrance. So obviously that floral is really gonna come through. The floral note that is really prominent in this one is rose. And me personally, I don't always love floral fragrances. Most of the time they're too strong and too over like overwhelming and too powerful for me. But this is a floral that I can definitely get on board with. It is my favorite in the Delina line. And I think the reason why I really love this one in particular is because the floral is really well blended with the vanilla and the muskiness. And there are also a lot of fruitier notes in this, which makes it sweet, but not sickening, if that makes sense. I do think that this is for the girlies that love a loud scent. I do think this projects really well. And if you don't like the initial spray, let it sit on your skin when you try it out because I think after like five to 10 minutes, it does really calm down on your skin and all those other notes that are in there start coming out and it's not so in your face floral. I personally love this one for the spring and summertime the most, but I know that a lot of people really, really love this for the fall and winter. So this could be a great, year-round fragrance but yeah the scent lasts forever it's fun it's flirty but it's still very elegant it just makes me happy it's such an addictive scent this one is definitely floral done right in my opinion so those first two fragrances I was a little bit more familiar with but the rest of them are actually all new brands for me so they're my first fragrance from each of these brands, and the next two are actually from the same brand. I purchased a couple of Goldfield and Banks fragrances, and the first one I wanna talk about is Sunset Hour. 
I have definitely been seeing this going around a lot and I was so interested in getting my hands on it because this is actually a gourmand fragrance but it is a summer gourmand, which makes me so excited because gourmands are some of my absolute favorites. But Sunset Hour is tropical without smelling like sunscreen, which I feel like most tropical scents lean. This one is sweet, but not too sweet. It's fruity, it's coconutty, it's vanilla but it's still very light and airy. It's nothing that's going to be overwhelming for the hotter months, and this is definitely a summer fragrance for sure. I could definitely see people wearing this in the daytime and in the nighttime, especially if you're going on a tropical vacation or if you live by the beach. I also think that this is gonna be more of a crowd pleaser. It's a very, very likable scent, and I think that's because it is so light and airy. So I've only worn this a couple of times so far, so from what I can tell, it's not super strong. It's not like a beast that it's just projecting so well, but I think that's kind of the appeal of this because it is just super lightweight, super like cloud-like. So for that reason, it's not going to be, you know, projecting super well. I really think I'm going to be reaching a lot for this one this summer and I'm super excited to try the brand. The next fragrance that I picked up from this brand, I did get a travel size only because I felt like this was going to be more of like a fall and winter fragrance but I still wanted to go ahead and try it. This is Silky Woods and the best way I can describe this one is that it smells like a more elegant version of replicas by the fireplace. It has that quality to where it smells like you're sitting by the fire, but there's still such a strong woody base coming through. And it's also not sweet and marshmallowy like by the fireplace. I actually like that a lot better because I feel like by the fireplace dries down to a like smoky vanilla, whereas this one is just a little bit more complex. So this one has notes of cinnamon, tobacco, vanilla, and sandalwood. It's got musk and it also has a couple of different florals in it. And like the name suggests, it does smell super silky. It smells very smooth and like very grown up. I was kind of nervous at first because I thought the tobacco and the oud, there's actually oud in this, I thought that was going to like come off very overwhelming, but surprisingly it does not stand out at all, which I absolutely love. It just gives it a deeper layer. I'm definitely excited to have this, but really, really excited to wear it in the colder months especially. The next fragrance I have to share with you guys is by far the most beautiful bottle I have ever seen. This is Serjoff's Apollonia, and look at her. She is beauty. She is grace. Absolutely stunning. And this fragrance from start to finish is a whole experience. So I have not had this long and I am still making up my mind on the scent itself. But what I can tell you is that the opening notes are very much floral to me. And this is supposed to be a musky floral. The main notes in this are musk, iris and white floral and to my nose I'm getting a lot of the white floral which I'm not a fan of but there's a quality about this that I keep coming back to and I definitely need to test this out more like I said I did just get this recently but according to a lot of reviews that I've seen it's supposed to dry down a lot muskier and less intense and it's supposed to be a pretty like close to the skin scent. The opening is very strong and it definitely projects. And like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the white florals in this, but I can't deny that this smells luxurious and like you are just very wealthy. It is definitely giving those vibes. It's mature, but like in a good way. And if this truly does dry down muskier than it projects, then I'm very, very excited to have it. 
As far as a, as the scent goes, I can see it being worn all year round. It does not just smell like a spring and summer scent to me. And yeah, I'm definitely very excited to have this. Excited to try the brand out. I like want to get everything from the brand. So you guys definitely will have to tell me what your favorites are. And I mean the bottle. It's beautiful. I'm sure you guys have all smell this by now and I actually have a funny story but my next fragrance is Narciso Rodriguez Must Noir Rose and I heard all about this I knew it was going super viral and I was so interested in smelling it I was super curious um, because everyone is so obsessed with it and I was finally able to smell it when I was in Barcelona and it was super accessible there. Like I saw this fragrance everywhere and I smelled it. And at first I was like, oh, I don't see what the hype is. Like it's nothing to write home about. And I kind of just moved on. And the longer I wore it, I kept like smelling something. And I would be like, oh my gosh, someone smells amazing. What is that? And then I would realize that it was what I had sprayed on myself and I was the one that smelled so good. So immediately I regretted not purchasing it and I came back to the States and I looked for this everywhere and I could not find it. I couldn't get it online. I mean, this was nowhere to be found. I finally found a little bottle at a department store and I knew I had to pick it up. So finally have this one in my collection and I definitely understand what the hype is about. Like I said, especially when it dries down, it is such a deep and sexy fragrance, but somehow it still feels appropriate for the daytime. Like definitely for the nighttime, but even for the daytime, it feels like, it just feels very elegant and musky and mysterious. I feel like there's a little bit of everything in this fragrance. Don't let the rose part of the name fool you. There's bergamot, which is normally more of like a fresh take. There's musk. There are fruity notes with a plum. There's vanilla. So I just feel like all of it is blended so well together that nothing is really sticking out more than the other. And I definitely feel like this is a year round fragrance, especially for the nighttime, but I've even worn it during the day and it might be a bad thing to others, but I don't feel like this lasts the longest. Um, for me personally, I was okay with that because I like switching out my scents, but I definitely didn't feel like this lasted the longest on myself. And I felt like after a couple of hours, it wasn't projecting anymore either. So just keep that in mind. This fragrance definitely feels signature scent worthy, and it just makes you feel like a grown woman. It's mature, but not in a bad way. It just smells like you have your life together, basically. Okay, so I saved the best for last. This next scent is absolutely my new addiction. I want this to be my signature scent, and I'm obsessed. That's all I can say. This is Blanche Bet by Liquid Imagineers. I did not know what to expect from this and I'm in love. Honestly, this is the creamiest smell I've ever smelled. It literally is straight up milk, but sweet milk with hints of cacao. It's musky, it's a little bit floral, but like way in the background. It's just the most lactonic smell I've ever smelled before. And I, like I said, I want to wear this every single day because somehow, even though it's so light and airy, not only does it project so well, but it has lasted on my skin for over eight hours. And when I wear it, I cannot stop sniffing myself. It is just so addictive. This fragrance is just super unique. 
I don't have anything else that smells like it. And for those reasons, I definitely think that you should not blind buy this. I could see it going south for a lot of people. I know that lactonic fragrances can tend to go sour on some people's skin chemistry, but thankfully that did not happen with this for me. I also know that a lot of people prefer wearing this in the fall and winter in the colder months but i'm not gonna lie i've been wearing this in like the dead heat of the day and i have not had a problem at all like i still love it so so much so i can definitely see myself wearing this year round it's definitely a daytime fragrance for me personally but i'm telling you guys this is gonna become my new signature scent the hype is so real with this I feel like the dry down brings out a lot of the muskier notes. It's still very creamy, but the vanilla comes through with the muskiness and with the creaminess. The cacao's there. I know some people say it smells like chocolate milk to them. I personally don't get chocolate milk per se, but I do smell the hints of cacao. Anyways, you guys have to get your nose on this. I am so, so, so in love. I cannot hype it anymore. All right, you guys, those are my new niche fragrances to my collection. I am so excited to have these and have these gorgeous bottles. I mean, they are literally like a piece of art to me. Um, let me know if you guys have tried any of these and if you feel differently. And let me know if you guys have any other recommendations as well. I would love to hear them. Don't forget to subscribe before you go and I will see you in my my next video. Bye guys.